it's I'm I'm glad to talk to you. It's weird because every once in yeah. a while, someone because I'm one of the few people that actually puts my phone number out there. Yeah. Someone will, someone will try to get a hold of Jaren, and so when you called and said, and I'm sorry, where are you calling from again? From the Netherlands. The Netherlands. Uh, yeah, it's I'm, just uh, near Germany. Oh no no I know where it is. <laughs> oh I, okay. <laughs> no no it's okay. But when the um, I just didn't recognize the the country prefix. So and then I got your email, and um, let me just hang on to it. So let me just read this real quick. Do you have a way of contacting him? And yeah I did. Um, uh, in fact Bob just sent me his phone number. But every once in a while, Jaron will miss stuff. I don't. He's really, really busy. But how long yeah, ago? Did, how long ago did he schedule um, this with you? Um, I think uh, it was about two weeks ago, and for last Thursday. So I was all pumped and I said, "Well, I'm going to talk to Jaron." <laughs> and then he didn't call. So I was so frustrated. Uh, but uh, it, it and happens. Then I, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. Go ahead. No, and and then. Um, I thought, well, he's just busy, so I sent him an email that he probably forgot and didn't respond to that. So I thought, well, he's just busy because I also saw that the uh, Ghostbusters, they didn't put out um, a show because it said that they were off for a week or so. So I thought, well, he, he might have some sort of vacation or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that could have been it. So... Yeah. Let me let, let me read this real quick because um, I because I'm recording this I figured why the heck not right so um, I have a I had a discussion in the cockpit with two colleagues one was the captain in training and the other was the instructor me the co-pilot in March of this year which would be 2017 it got unpleasant actually nasty and I decided to go to the company doctor and I basically said. Uh, that it was not possible for me to fly anymore knowing the earth is flat while nobody else knows or wants to know They even got uh, get violent when you want a discussion about our gyroscopes, etc Not really sure uh, of what will happen next. I live in the Netherlands where flat earth is not really known just by a few people I get lonely because of that. Anyway, if I could be of help kind regards Lydia uh, Okay, so Do you mind me? Is it okay if I say your full name? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, I, and it's Lydia. Oh boy, and I don't know if I can pronounce this. O O O U W E R S L O O T, which is pronounced as Our Slot. Our Slot. Yeah. yeah, that's that sounds very. <laughs> oh, you probably uh, you want to say it like O, but you just have to figure it's O A, like boat. Our Slot. Our Slot. So Lydia, Our Slot from the yeah. Netherlands and I will try not to slip into any sort of fake American Netherland accent because uh, <laughs> you know how we do it and it's just ridiculous um, because there's a lot of northern European people that settled in the northern part of the United States if you did not oh, know okay. uh, up in Wisconsin no, and um, uh, Minis oh, Min Minnesota yeah. Yeah, like the farms and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. My family's actually there, uh, or was there for a number of years uh, from Germany. So, and oh, there's okay. so a lot, a lot of German settlers went up to. The, I don't know why. It's the coldest place in the United States, the Minnesota yeah, and Wisconsin. Yeah, we're used to it. Or that, or that. I guess <laughs> uh, it's like, oh yeah, let's go up where it's cold and it's, you know, winters are horrible. Uh, so, yeah. tell me a little bit about. Uh, how okay let's let's start from the beginning how did you yeah. first get into flat earth how did you first start looking into it yeah well actually i was just um uh since 2003 mm -hmm. i was looking into the vaccine uh business mm -hmm. because my son uh um he's now 13 uh, he got ver very ill from the uh, vaccination, Ooh. and uh, yeah, that was really bad. He had he had a uh, uh, how do you call that uh, brain? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, like injury. a injury. Yep, sure. So um, that's how I got you know onto the internet mm -hmm. in 2003, and I was reading about uh, a lot and um, yeah, figuring things out. And um, then I got, you know, in all the conspiracies. Yep. And um, 
I also uh, see, uh, uh, I'm busy on Pinterest, you know that? Sure, sure. Yeah, and uh, there I saw this thing on, uh, and it was actually uh, for, uh, with a gyroscope. Sure. So, um, of course, that appealed to me because I thought, well, <laughs> we work with gyroscopes of flat earth, what is this? Yeah. So, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I was not, you know, discarding it right away because of, well, I have a very open mind to everything. So I thought, well, just read and read and read and read and watch a lot of videos after that. And then, yeah, I didn't know anything about, you know, I, I always thought uh, Einstein was a genius and, sure. and, and yeah, so that's what I always thought. And so we're, and, we're, yeah. how, how long just, you know, I, because I have to ask a couple follow-up questions. How long have you been a, uh, in the airline industry? Um, actually, uh, I got uh, my license in '91. Wow, long time. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I've I've been with uh, the the company that I'm at now, which is actually the best uh, in the in the, in Holland. There are not so many, but right. uh, they're a very good company, and uh, I, I'm with them uh, for 22 years now. Wow. So, so uh, 20, so, so, okay, just to, to recap here real quick. So you got into conspiracies because your son got a vaccination and suffered some brain injury because injury. of it. Yep. And then yep. started going down conspiracies, saw a couple things that had to do with flat earth and gyroscopes and thought, hmm, this is sort of interesting. Yep. So did, did you start poking around uh, in your, inside your company? Did you like, yes, were there friend, friends of yeah, yours? Yeah, so I, I was just. Because, you know, there are lots of things that we are taught about, you know, the spinning earth. Mm -hmm. And I, I told to my uh, colleagues, because, of course, you think about it, but then you just discard it, about how it is possible that uh, the, the atmosphere spins with the, um, with the globe. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you well, that might be gravity. And then it says, well, then you have to, uh, it has to spin faster at a higher altitude because there's no... There's no gra gradual, uh, how do you say that, uh, difference. Right. So I thought, well, that's kind of strange. And also the um, um, the speed at which the uh, Earth should spin around the equator, I thought, well, that's almost the, so the speed of sound. So that's kind of strange. And then. Also, when you fly, let's say, from Johannesburg to Amsterdam, mm -hmm. there is no, we don't have to account for the difference, you know, and also not uh, because it spins then at a different rate. Sure. And it doesn't also, uh, you know, we don't also have to account for the difference in altitude that it, that it spins. So yeah, yeah. I thought, this is so strange. And now, actually, I, <laughs> I, I told the other day to... Uh, to a stewardess because she has an open mind and now I have to work on the ground. I said, well, actually, I'm a little bit uh, um, ashamed of, you know, believing all this shit. And I should have, you know, questioned before because my IQ isn't actually good enough <laughs> to, um, you know, question how does a gyroscope work, actually, because it does not, you know, measure the, uh, the gravity. Sure. So, but yeah. Yeah, and I, I got to interrupt here for a second. Don't be yeah. too hard on yourself. I mean, you got to remember yeah. that we're living in a time now where most people don't know anything about technology. I mean, forget yeah. about forget yeah. about how your your phone works that you're holding in your hand if that's what you're using yeah. to talk to me. Forget about that. Yeah. Look at look at old technology like I don't know microwave ovens. The average yeah. person on yeah, the street, I mean, like ninety percent of them don't even know how those things operate. And no, me neither. <laughs> we we've been using those to cook our food since the '70s, so yeah, don't yeah. don't feel. I mean, gyroscopes. Look, everybody in the flat Earth community, and I'll let you go on here in a second. Everybody in the flat Earth community has had to relearn a lot yeah. of scientific premises, just just so we could catch up and then tear it down. And gyroscopes is one of them. actually gyroscopes helped us a whole bunch. I didn't know how to, how gyroscopes. Know. I mean, we've seen them of course and and we yeah. you know we spin things around and we kind of get the the feel for them but how they relate to the earth spinning oh yeah most people don't know 
So anyway, sorry, yeah. continue, yeah. please. So you were looking into the gyroscopes and then what? Yeah, uh, and then of course, when um, I also saw the um, movies from Eric Dubay yep. about the ri uh, rising horizon, yep. horizon yep. and I thought, well, yeah, that's true. And we do fly at 40,000 feet, 41,000 feet sometimes. Mm -hmm. And of course, I've been, uh, this is now almost uh, a year going on that I was, uh, you know, that I, uh, that I started looking that I started looking for the um, for the curve, let's say, yeah. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, of course I couldn't find it, and and I saw the horizon, you know, rising with us, and it was flat wherever I looked, and I thought, well, shit, why did I, <laughs> you know, <laughs> didn't see this before? And then I started questioning in the cockpit, you know, do you know that the uh, that the uh, atmosphere spins at the uh, at the same speed? Uh, as the uh, so the speed of sound at the equator, and then I get this strange look on their faces, you know, when whenever I would ask something like that. But it bothered me so much that I, I thought, well, I, yeah, it ha this has to, you know, go sure. out there. And and I thought, well, you can just discuss these things, but obviously not. So uh, yeah. So when you when you started questioning with, I mean, and, and I appreciate the fact that you you were bold enough to talk to your co-pilots and and the other people that are out there and and yeah. see what's going on. Did anyone respond favorably at all, or did everybody just look at you like you had a bug on your face? Yeah, that last the last uh, thing. Yeah, that, that was pretty much yeah. it. Yeah, that that's just the way it is, and that's why it went nasty the last time because then uh, we were with the three in a cockpit. I'm the co-pilot actually. Uh, I should have been a captain, I know, but I'm just a mom, and that's what I prefer <laughs> to do. So we 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 don't get pressed to uh, you know uh, um, go to be captain. So mm -hmm. I always enjoy it. You know, I only work 50%, so I have I have time enough to raise my own children. Yeah. So that's the reason why I'm still a co-pilot. But um, uh, we were with the three of us in the cockpit, and uh, the the captain he was in training, and the instructor was on the uh, jump seat. And uh, we had a night stop in um, uh, Zurich, and um, the last day that we uh, actually flew from Zurich uh, to Amsterdam, uh, they said, well, did you actually mean those things that you said about uh, flat earth and everything? I said, yes, I do. And they say, well, we think you are retarded. <laughs> and they didn't actually say yeah. that, did they? Yeah, they did. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So and uh, you are uh, how do you call that? Uh, Grounded. Um, uh, labile. I don't know if, if what what that is in uh, English actually, um, but it's it's like you are mentally unstable. Oh no, that's <laughs> that's like pretty. That. Yeah, yeah. So you're kind yeah. of they. So who said this to you? Uh, that actually said the instructor said that to me. He said, really? Well, actually, yeah, because I did not go out to dinner with them because. Um, I could already, you know, sense that there was no match between uh, the three of us. Right. So uh, I did not go out with dinner to the, uh, with them uh, at the, the the night stop. And uh, he said, well, we had a discussion, a discussion between the two of us about you. And uh, we think you are, uh, well, retarded, but the, then the, the Dutch word for that. <laughs> and, uh, and mentally unstable, so... Um, um, I said, well, if you think uh, think like that, and we only had like 20 minutes left or so, mm -hmm. I, I suggest that you come sit in my seat, because I knew he was, uh, you know, an instructor, and he could sit in both uh, seats, because you're, um, as an instructor, you need to, need to be able to, you know, sit in both seats. Mm -hmm. um, so I said, well, you better sit here, because I'm not going to fly any longer with you guys. Really? All, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, and I'm also not leaving this cockpit because I think it's not fair that the two of you have a discussion <laughs> behind my back. I mean, how low can you go? Okay, so so, so let me. I want to break this down for whoever yeah. might be listening to this. Okay, so you're flying from where to where? I'm from Zurich to Amsterdam. Zurich to Amsterdam, and you were bringing up the topic, and the other two pilots that are in the in the cockpit. Mm -hmm. 
that yeah, I, and I know how it goes. I've I've known some pilots to where normally when you land, the, the, the whoever is the team goes out for dinner, and sometimes the the cabin crew or the um uh, the yeah, flight attendants they sometimes they come along too. It's like let's go out for dinner, but you could tell already that these guys were not having any of that, and yeah. so you basically gave up your co-pilot seat and said, you know what, you can fly the plane. At yep, this point, yeah. and he sat yeah. there, and you got so what? You just sat in the other seat, and everyone just shut up. Yeah, Nobody said. Yeah, yeah, I sat in the gym seat. Yeah, and everybody was quiet. So what so happened? After, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So we land. They landed, and I sat in the in the gym seat. And I said, "Well, you know, guys, uh, we get we we really uh, get a lot of training uh, with uh, with our company <laughs> about uh, how to communicate uh, amongst um, each other because." Uh, lots of uh, errors happen when the com uh, communication in the cockpit is not working out. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of training about that. I said, well, guys, all the things that we di discussed yesterday, because I don't know how the topic came up, but uh, we discussed about those trainings, about the things we shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. You both did. Like, um, uh, we call that OMA. The O is for... Um, <laughs> Uh, or daily that, that is uh, to judge uh -huh. um, the M is for um, uh, meaning uh, uh, that's opinion mm -hmm. have an opinion and A is for aanname and that means uh, to um, as assume uh -huh. so I said well those things you both did without even questioning me you just you know they're, yeah their natural reaction was to out. think it's like In yeah you get yeah, yeah. She, she's stupid. So, uh, you know, flat yeah. flat yeah. Earth is ridiculous. Yeah. So we're we're gonna judge you right here and right now. Yeah, yeah. So I did not even have you know you did not even ask me one question. Like, I mean, I, I was educated the way you were. I mean, and I, that's what I told him. I said, well, I'm probably smarter than the both of you together <laughs> <laughs> because I probably am. <laughs> Could be. But um, that, that, that's a little bit, you know. I know, How do you I know. That? Yeah, yeah, whatever, but a little uh, egotistical, mad, but that's I was okay. Mad also, of course. Yeah. So um, I said, um, but you could have asked me, well, Lydia, what? How do you come to such a such a strange viewpoint or whatever? You know, you could have asked me some question instead of just throwing me out. Mm -hmm. And. Um, well, the uh, instructor said, well, I'm sorry about that. Um, and actually, he got tears in his eyes, so I was a little um, <laughs> I was a little moved by that because I thought, well, yeah, okay. Uh, I came on quite strong, actually, because well, I was mad, of course. And, I, and he also was relieved because I said, well, uh, when I stepped out of my uh, seat, I said, well, I will see you uh, in the uh, in the office, I guess, mm -hmm. because I assume because we have to write about these things. If, if things like this happen, uh, I thought, well, he's an instructor; he's going to write about this. So I thought, well, I, I will see you in the office, I guess. Yeah, that's the the the, the most natural thing for me to assume. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, you know, when we landed, he said, well. Are you going to write about this? I said, "Well, I am not." I mean, and when uh, and when you mean write about it, you mean our our term would be like filing a report. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. File a report. So yeah, you correct. so we, you, at this point you're thinking of filing a report against your your co-pilots, your fellow your fellow pilots for. Well, he thought I was going to do that because that's what I said when I stepped out of my seat uh, earlier. I said, "Well, I'm, I think I'm going to see you then in in the office." Yeah. Because I assumed, because he's the instructor, that he would, you know, he was the one who was, you know, trashing me. So I thought, mm -hmm. well, he he will probably write about it. So um, after the landing, I said, well, oh, he asked, he was scared. He said, are you going to uh, write about it? I said, well, no, I'm not going to write about it, but I'm going, going to go straight to the uh, uh, doctor's office from... Uh, from the company, mm -hmm. and um, I'm going to ask for some uh, support in this. So he, then he was really relieved. <laughs> he said, "Well, I'm go not going to write about it either." <laughs> I said, "Well, do whatever you please." 
So, uh, so both of you discussed, mutually agreed not to file a report on each other about an argument that had to do with flat Earth. Probably a good thing at the time. Yeah. So yeah. then, so then, but but then your follow up was, and just so I can, because I'm reading your email here, you okay. you went to the company physician, the company doctor, yep. and you have more or less you have you did you request to them? You said, look, I don't think I should fly anymore because. I don't believe the earth is a globe. Well, actually, I called in sick. Okay. And um, I made an appointment. Uh -huh. And then I went to um, the doctor because I thought, well, I, you know, I have all the evidence there is. So what? Yeah. Yeah. It's this not, it's not like you're medically insane. You're no. just, you're just going to, but who else could you go to? Because I don't imagine you have a company psychiatrist, which is what most well, people would recommend. Or do you? <laughs> he said he didn't even, you know, because I started to explain to him how I got to the point of thinking flat earth, because, oh. you know, it needs a little bit of an introduction, I guess. Oh yeah. You can't so, just come out and say it because they won't even understand. It'd be like, no, you no. mean like metaphorically or... <laughs> What are we talking about here? <laughs> so you, you explained to yeah. him your belief system and why you think the earth is flat and his response, I'm sorry, his or her? Uh, his. His, yeah. his response was? Um, okay, Lydia, I'm going to send you to the uh, psychiatrist. Yep, I was, I was I will, waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, I will hold your uh, medical license and you cannot fly for no. <laughs> so. So have well, you te whatever. now? Did you temper? So I'm. I'm. I'm just want to get the get the the terms right here. Technically, are you still working for the company? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, have you company. been? Yeah. You haven't been suspended without pay or anything like that. No. 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 That's not the the, the thing they would you know. Would do. But 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 did you request? that you wanted you didn't want to fly anymore or did they say you shouldn't fly anymore and i mean obviously you're not flying yeah. at the moment no no i said i cannot fly at this moment because i'm tired of all the lying okay and i'm just exhausted and i'm you know i feel humiliated humiliated and everything and i think we should look into this <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm and when, when, when was this? When was it? All into, in this, but they, they just, they just don't. They're not open-minded. Oh, people. hey, look, pilots are. It's a tough. I mean, I've talked to a handful of pilots already, but this is one of my got to be one of my favorite stories because, well, and, and sorry, I got to back up a little bit. When did this happen? Uh, this happened in March. Okay, this happened in March. And did, so did you, after that, did you see a psychiatrist? The company psychi- or, Yeah, or, I had to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And? They, they, they made me. <laughs> so uh, I went. I had to go two times. Okay. And uh, the first time, the uh, psychiatrist explained that I had a right, a recht van aanhouden, and that means that uh, you don't, uh, you, you get the last say in whether the report goes to your company or not. Oh, I got it. You get the, clo you get the closing remarks. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So I can say, okay, you can send the, the uh, I can read the report. And if I'm not, uh, you know, um, uh, happy with it. it. Yeah. Happy with it. Then uh, I can say, well, no, don't send it. Oh, really? That's, wow, that's way. That's yeah. way more uh, yeah, flex, flexible than we, what we have over and here. <laughs> I, seriously, a psychiatrist could States. literally put you in a jacket and, and lock you in a room, and you wouldn't, you wouldn't have yeah. much of an opinion. But yeah. anyway, so go ahead. So um, I sat there, and I want to, you know, explain a little bit how I came where I, I am, mm -hmm. and. He was not interested. He said, well, you know, I don't want to hear all those things. I just want you because, you know, with my son and everything, I, I you know, it's kind of a long story. But, you know, I wanted to explain to him how I got where I am. And he just was not interested. He said, no, I want to hear you about the flat earth. Uh -huh. And I said, well, uh, because I brought all the books and, you know, all the uh, my iPad with every 
thing I <laughs> I found is about so, four thousand. <laughs> oh my lord! Uh, so you were actually going to try to convince the psychiatrist that the Earth was flat? Well, yeah, I know. I'm a uh, friend a little... of mine. He's a, he's a coach. He said, "Well, Lydia, you are being a little bit naive in you know trying to uh, to convince this guy." Even well, not <laughs> you know, not. It, not naive, but you got to remember that as a like a, a psychiatric professional, there is no way that even if they wanted to, even if they believed you, there's no way they could nod their head and say, "All right, this is you're absolutely true. This is true, Lydia. It's absolutely true." <laughs> they, there's no way they can because once they did that, if that got out, oh, their their career would be over. I mean, they they would literally be ostracized by their their peer groups, and so. But anyway, so so you tried but, but anyway. I, I'm choosing that path, so I think. Well, why why are aren't men a little bit more courageous? I think I I'm always more courageous than everybody I meet. It's just I don't know. I don't understand. But that's okay. I mean, yeah. Maybe I'm I'm not that you know I mean I just moved to a real nice house and everything and I thought well I might have to say goodbye to this within a year because I don't know what's going to happen. Sure. But okay, I'm fine with that. I mean, who cares? Uh, you, I'll are find a, a, you are you are a brave place, brave person, yeah. Lydia. There's a lot of people that wouldn't have, but at the yeah. same time you're in a unique position because pilots. You know, they, they deal with that perspective all the time. Most pilots, just so I can give you a little a little background here, mm -hmm. most pilots don't know what to do with the information even when they get it because of their conditioning. So, yeah, when you're in the cockpit at 40,000 feet, you see a flat horizon. You see it every single day you fly. But mm -hmm. since you were taught, since you were a child, that it's a globe, there's this weird conflict that happens. It's like, well... Yeah. Uh, it's a globe because I'm told it's a globe, but I only see flat. So you know what? I'm just going to land the plane and try to live my life as as quickly as possible. Yeah. That's that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, most pilots well, I've I've heard are just too busy to be honest with all the you know all the different checks they have to do. And I know there's big sections of it where you're really really bored because the the plane can yeah. fly itself. But yeah. still, so you went to the psychiatrist a couple times. Did you like the report he wrote? Or did you not? Well, well, the second time that I uh, went, he yes. said, "Well, Lydia, you don't even have to uh, start talking because I'm not interested. I think you know where this is going." Mm -hmm. um, I said, "Well, yeah." He said, "Well, uh, I will. Uh, um, I think it's it's called delusion or something like that in in English. And we have another name for that in Dutch." Mm -hmm. So I said, "Well, okay." I said you didn't even have a, gla a glance at anything I I'm I'm you know I'm here for and nope. nope. He said well I nope <laughs> I am uh, aware of conspiracy theories he said and he said that chuckling so he was laughing and I thought okay well whatever so I was actually pissed and I went <laughs> home <laughs> and um while I was in the train, because it was a train ride of about two hours, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna even wait for the report because what's going to be in there? Nothing that I need to know. Right. So I emailed him right away when I got home. I said, well, dear Mr. Huppel the Pip, uh, I don't need your report. Don't even bother writing it because I'm gonna, you know. You're gonna veto uh, it, basically. You're gonna yeah, say, you know what, yeah, I, I don't yeah, care what, yeah. whatever you say. I'm not going to like it. So, and again, Don't I'm amazed that the right, Netherlands yeah. has that sort of flexibility where, it's like, where, the, where the individual can actually override the doctor's report. That's stunning. That's, that's really, yeah. but, but it worked out for you. So you said, okay, so then, so then what? So you go back to work? So at that point? No, you... no, no, because they, they have my medical license. Uh, you know, uh, on hold or okay. whatever. Or, so yeah. technically, you're so, on medical. We call it medical leave. So you were, you're, you're currently at that time. You were on the ground, not getting up in a plane again because they said there's a a medical issue. Yeah, correct. Okay. That's still the case. And now I'm working on the ground because they say, well, uh, okay, you cannot go into the cockpit. <laughs> I think you can do some other work. 
you should not. Can you just cut that one out because <laughs> I don't want the company name. Uh, got it, got it. I will not say. I will not say your company name. I'll I'll cut that little part out. Yeah. Um. Okay. But what? So, so they benched you. We call it benching it or grounding you. So they grounded you, but they didn't want to fire you because you were too valuable because you've been doing the airline industry things for the last twenty something years. Yeah, that's not our the way they go about. You know, they just don't fire you like that. I mean, right. So does will, it does it take they will a help lo- me find you know uh, some other profession? About that, yeah, you're not. By the way, don't keep don't keep saying that name, or I'll, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, <laughs> that's okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. So, no, no. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. I mean, anyway. So, yeah. so they in in the Netherlands. Just so I'm sure about this, it's and I've seen this in different corporations in the United States. Usually the big ones. They they don't like firing people because it's a pain for HR. The HR, the HR department doesn't like human resources, doesn't like dealing with it. So they, you, they'll they shuffle you off to a different department. So now you're, so you haven't flown since March. Correct. Uh, do you have any anticipation that you will be flying? I don't think so. Now, now is that a voluntary thing? Have you been pushing it? Or are you like happy with your desk job and you're like, eh, I'll, I'll just take the desk job for now. Um, well, you know, <laughs> um, I am uh, currently because they allowed me to look for uh, a job that, you know, fits my, uh, let's say, needs at mm-hmm. the moment. So uh, I found a job where I can uh, meet uh, all kinds of people, but uh, uh, colleagues, and mm-hmm. they ask me, why are, not, why are you not flying? So now I have an opportunity to say, well... I have different beliefs than, than most people, you know. So uh, actually, I'm, uh, uh, I'm I'm figuring things out. And actually, I want to wear T-shirts, you know, with flat earth on it, <laughs> and and uh, just to go to my ground job and um, spread the word. Just spread wow, the, spread the word. you yeah. are one of the bravest people I have ever met. I mean that you that's amazing so so now because you're grounded you're now doing the the ground jobs uh, in the airline industry people ask you because once they figure out who you are it's like wait why aren't you flying you tell them you know it's like oh yeah I'm not flying because of and you probably describe what is what's happened to you over the last six months well um, I'm just uh, I've just started like four weeks ago so and I only have to come in two times a week because I work fifty percent, so uh, I don't have to go there very often. Yeah. So I just wanted to meet my colleagues there, and you know, uh, get to know them. And but I just I just started this. Yeah. So uh, I, I the last time I was there, I I said that I believe that and that the moon landings were fake. And actually, there was there are two other pilots also, uh, which have some. Uh, uh, some issue why they have to work uh, on the ground because they are something medical mm-hmm. and um, they laughed at me <laughs> oh I can I can imagine yeah. they would laugh at you yeah. well let me I, I've got to ask you some pointed questions here like one if all of a sudden they came back and they were desperate and they needed a pilot would you jump back in or is this something it's like yeah you know what it doesn't really mean much to me anymore uh, no, it it actually didn't mean a lot to me anymore uh, already for a couple of years, mm-hmm. and that had to do with also the fact that I'm a woman in a man's world, and ah, I yeah, got it. Yeah, sometimes you just think, well, if yeah, I'm really open-minded. I mean, that's why uh, that's why I you know got into this in the first place. But also when you are working with people who are totally not, there is hardly any connection, right? And I miss that so. I actually have more fun with with the stewardesses when <laughs> when we are somewhere <laughs> nice. than with my colleagues in the cockpit. So, nice. yeah. So I don't I don't really miss it. Uh, the other day it was really windy. I thought, well, now I miss it because, yeah. Then you can you know uh, practice your skills a little bit and do some really uh, some real flying, and that that's the part that I miss. But the, the whole life around it, I I. Don't miss. No. So I, I wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, do pilots secretly like bad weather, or is this just you? 
Because I like I like I knew a bus driver. I knew a woman bus driver who absolutely loved when I was living in Denver. Who absolutely loved the snow because it was the only chance she could show off her driving skills because she could actually drive really really well in the snow. Are you saying? Even though all passengers hate bad weather, that you as a pilot loved bad weather? Because <laughs> wind, wind scares the hell out of people, just so you know. I know. Yeah, but you, you know. thought it was fine. Uh, because when, it's not, when it's not too bad, yeah. yeah. yeah like, we, do, we do like that. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what part? The landing on a windy runway type thing? Yeah. That's oh, correct. my God. <laughs> yeah. because it's a, well, because it's a challenge. You were just bored. It's yeah, like, oh, come yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Normal landings are so boring that, that pilots just kind of hope for something, you know, like an icy <laughs> runway. Hey, is there some ice on the wings? No, yeah. No, no, no ice. No, no, no. I no, no, like not ice, but wind. That's so tricky. The wind is okay, yeah. Yeah, but you wouldn't, like, deliberately try to, like, try, like, to fly through some dark clouds or anything. No, it's not, it's not like that. It's not like a great is in that way. No, that's not, that's not the way to go. No, no, no. no. We are very careful. I'm, I'm a very careful person. My children always say, well, mom, you drive like a, like a snail. Come on, hit the gas. <laughs> so no, I'm, I'm, I'm really a slow, slow person. All right. All right. <laughs> and, but yeah, and, but and, every yeah. once in a while, but you don't like boring, boring stuff. You don't like the same old stuff. So, yeah, I, I can see that. So when you see like a 20 mile an hour crosswind coming in on the runway, you're like, ooh, yeah, yeah buckle up. This is going to yeah, be fun. Yeah, 20, 20 is nice. Yeah, yeah even anything. Yeah, even even though the passengers behind you, you know, are gripping their seats so tight that they have, you know, they practically yeah. break their own fingers. I w I'm sorry, I did a lot of business travel. So now that I know this, this is, this is good. <laughs> this is good stuff. Wow. Yeah. So... <sighs> So you've been, uh, all right, let's, let's kind of go a different direction here. So you've been in Flat Earth now for what, less than a year officially? Yeah, less than a year. Less than a year. November, yeah. And you've watched a whole ton of videos and read a whole bunch of web pages. Yeah. Is there, what's, and you, and you probably talk, I mean, it doesn't sound obviously like you're shy about telling, talking about this with people for you as a pilot or in this case a grounded pilot yeah. uh, what was your but you flew for a lot of years what was the biggest thing for you what you know because everybody for, you know I could talk to 20 different flat, flat earth community members and they'd all have a different answer to this which is what is the one thing that flipped in your head where you were you know half asleep on the couch it's like holy smokes that's it you know, yeah, was, the was gyroscope, there... it's just a gyroscope because I thought, well, it cannot work. It cannot work on a, on a globe. No, can't. Because, can't. yeah. And if you... also, also the speed of sound at the, uh, at the equator, those two things that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the core, yeah. So the, the, the spinning of the earth, yeah. The, the atmosphere going along with basically the Coriolis effect. You're not, a, you're not adjusting the flight path for the Coriolis effect. And you guys are yeah, going right. from north to south a lot. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, you you were saying you were flying to Johannesburg from the Netherlands. Well, uh, before I uh, flew the uh, 737, I mm -hmm. flew the MD11. Mm -hmm. So then we went uh, uh, to um, Kenya, not to and uh, not to Johannesburg. That was just uh, an example that I sure. gave you. But I I've never been there. But Kenya's but, uh, Kenya's did. fine. That that'll work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, so, so yeah. the middle of somewhere in the middle of Africa, you guys are flying yeah. from the Netherlands, and not only yeah. did you have not have to, because that was a, that's a question. In fact, I might as well ask you this, since we have a hard time asking pilots. We we there's a whole bunch of videos out there uh, where people are trying to ask pilots. When you, you you know how the gyroscope works, and you know how the curvature of the Earth works. So, yeah. from a pilot standpoint, do you ever see any instruments, or do you have to set anything in the cockpit that constantly adjusts for the eight inches per mile squared? Or every fifty miles, you would have to adjust about seventeen hundred feet. You, no, nothing. Never. No. No, never. The only thing is that I was uh, thinking about, but I also saw that I cannot find it anymore. That's really a pity. Mm -hmm. But um, we have this inertial reference system, and it has uh, like really advanced 
the gyros, the um, the laser ring gyros, and mm-hmm. it has accelerometers on it. Mm-hmm. And um, you can, um, when something goes wrong with that system, you can reset it, and you can have the heading back. Yeah. And um, but then again, I I saw this. Um, um, this video on uh, YouTube that a guy asked uh, the company, I think it was Honeywell or something, right. um, about uh, resetting and putting the uh, uh, the right uh, coordinates in. Mm-hmm. And this guy said, well, it doesn't really matter. Don't put anything yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, I know that one because that, that was a 777 pilot. I read that one. That's that was me. Okay. Where the triple seven okay. pilot? Okay, so uh, I saw it with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He messaged me and he said the gyroscope compensator that's below the gyroscope is made by a particular company, and there's only this company supplies everybody, and it's a, it's a NASA subcontractor. And the when you and and he went to an airport and it broke, you know, because pieces break every once in a while, and yeah. it broke. And they asked for a repl- he asked for a replacement before he could take off, and they said, you know what, just compensate for it manually. And just because he knew what, what about flat Earth, he decided to ignore that and just wow. make make note of it. And when he was flying, and it basically took a six hour trip, and he never had to. And yeah, he took notes of of what the degree should be, but he never compensated for it. And so yeah. then he was going, okay, what does this thing actually do? If <laughs> if I didn't have to, I just flew uh, six hours and it wasn't yeah. even working. Yeah. And when he tried to, the thing that got me was when he called the company. They, you know, pilots, as you may know, uh, are, are are you know considered very very wonderful people in the airline industry. So they can go to airline companies. They could walk into Boeing, and Boeing is like, yeah, oh, let's yeah, let's yeah. give you the tour. Ah, yeah, and yeah. they wouldn't even talk to this guy. Uh, they were like, they was like very very closed lipped about what these gyroscope compensators would would even do. Yeah. And yeah. so yeah, yeah. and there's a, and this is a triple seven guy that really wanted to. He's still flying. But he's yeah. he's going. I don't know what's going on out there, but there's there there are companies involved that are. They may not know exactly what's happening, but they they they're they're up to no good. Let's put it that way. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So oh, let, me, let me let me yeah. let me ask you a couple of other quick questions, and then you can ask whatever you want. Which is um uh, just for the record, when you were looking out through the cockpit, did you before you got into flat Earth? Did you even think about the curve or was it just one of those things that was in the back of your head? And then when you found out about Flat Earth, did you look out the window differently? Um, Actually, I never thought about the curve. Mm -hmm. Never, never. Maybe that's strange, but I I really, I really No, why why would you, right? Yeah, I don't know. Now I think it's strange, but... (laughs) But then when you got into it, when you were looking out the window, did it look completely different to you? It was like, holy smokes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, then I saw how flat it was, and I thought, well, that's kind of strange that it never appeared to me like that. Yeah, couldn't yeah. couldn't see. We have a saying here, I don't know if it's the same over there, uh, which is you couldn't see the forest for the trees. You know, right. you, you yeah. just yeah. could not, it was like, didn't even occur to you. You looked out that window all the time for 20-something years. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you think it's flat out there? You see it's flat? It is flat. And, and you're like, what? No. Yeah couldn't couldn't be uh so where do you um so you're working half time now you're working on the ground uh i don't know what it's like in the netherlands are you just planning on staying with this company who shall not be named for until um (laughs) until retirement or are you just i i mean i don't know what your what your plans are where are you going to go to for example the um you know the the london is having a flat earth conference coming up in april are you going yeah, to? Yeah, I went here. We had we had one uh, the other day in the, um, the Netherlands. Oh right! How'd that go? Yeah, yeah, it was nice because cool. um, uh, Mike Kavanaugh, you know him. Uh, I've heard of him. Uh, so he was there and doing uh, his uh, presentation on the uh, let's say the the path of the sun. Nice. Uh, with in some sort of a tourist field. Uh, w- because his dad, he is an um, an astronomer, mm-hmm. and uh, he is a retired astronomer. But he, ha- he has all the uh, equipment, 
and he can use that, you know, to um, to investigate. Nice. So I, I got to ask him how his relation was with his dad because I'm a really family uh, kind of person. So I thought, well, how is it going to be for him because he's such a flat earther and his father is an astronomer. So that's got to be tricky. This, yeah, how is this the relationship going to these uh, between these people? But he said, well, they they uh, agree to disagree. <laughs> Sure. So, um, and yeah. I, I've seen that with other people too. Yeah, if you're into astronomy, not not just if you have like a master's degree in astronomy or astrophysics, but if you're even an amateur astronomer, this is a tough pill to swallow because yeah. they yeah. don't. It's like look. I mean, I had a guy. He could not get out of the loop. He was going, "Look, I've seen the moons of Jupiter through my telescope." I go and I give him my explanation. It's like, "Look, you're looking at a display system, right?" And then he go, "No, no, no. I've seen the rings of Saturn." I'm going same argument it's like no i've seen i go dude you can list off 20 different things it does if you're talking about the same thing basically you're looking at the sky and you think it's real and yeah. you know you think it's this vast vast thing hey um you you, you it sounds like your kids are old enough to kind of have an opinion on this do they know what well what, that's that's a really painful thing because i'm oh, no. divorced I, no don't tell me it was divorced because of that no, 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 no. Oh, okay, okay. I, I was divorced already nine years ago. Oh, okay. And uh, we do co-parenting. Okay. And um, half of the time they live with my ex-husband and uh -huh. half of the time they live with me. Oh, boy. And uh, <laughs> no, no, it's not that. It's not that dramatic. Well, no, the kids go, the, uh, kids go back to, to dad and they're going, you're never going to yeah. believe what mom's doing. <laughs> well, I don't know if they do that because... Uh, they're kind of smart, actually. <laughs> so they know it probably and, wouldn't be a good idea to upset upset your yeah, ex-husband? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, they know that uh, we try to have the best conversation possible between the two of us, you know, in, in the best interest of them. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of effort uh, from both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and they know. <laughs> so they know we are totally different persons and uh, yeah, their father flies also so um he's a pilot also with the same company oh my god yeah. <laughs> he wait so you see him uh no because uh, we try to work you know uh, in different places the other shift because he's also working part-time oh okay and we never like daycare so they don't have to go so i work when he's off uh yeah when he's off and the other way around so i've heard i've heard that it's quite common you know because i know there's not a lot of women that are that are flying that are pilots in the airline industry but i hear it's quite common that men and women in those positions do get married to each other so did you meet on the job did you meet while you were while you were both flying um we met in a uh, flying school <laughs> there you go so yeah <laughs> and then what you got married did you got married after flight school or uh well in holland it's not that you know big of a deal to get married and actually i, I wasn't you know um, really looking for marriage or anything but then my oldest son uh, got born and uh, because um, uh, well, I, want, I wanted to have children but then um, uh, this with the legal things and everything we said well it's just easier to get married sure so uh, then we got married so, so then uh, you ended did, now did you apply for the and we we're not going to say what company it is but you applied for the same company and then i mean did every once in a while literally were you guys was he a were you both co-pilots or was he a pilot and you were a co-pilot well he's actually flying an, another aircraft he's flying a triple seven oh, okay the flagships so, um, yeah so yeah, yeah. so he so you guys didn't run into each other in the job that much no 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 never never no, okay. because yeah we work opposite shifts let's say opposite so, shifts uh, and somewhat yeah. different planes so you were you yeah. were you were a seven three yeah. seven. He was a seven seven seven. He probably started out with the seven four sevens, though. I would imagine. Um, actually, he he started with a, a small company within our company. Oh. And um, uh, yeah, because he got hired a little bit later than me, so um, it, it was uh, some sort of process. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, it, it's a very good company to work for. I mean, everybody. Is jealous if you say that you work for them because they're just very, very good. It's a very good employer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got it. So, um, yeah, yeah. 
Wow. So uh, I, I can say nothing bad about them. Let's say. No, no, but heck, they didn't. They didn't fire you technically. No, no, no. I mean, they just no, grounded no. you. Let me let me give you a quick little uh, comparison story. There was a, and I you, I don't know how old you are, but you don't have to tell me. There was a story back in 1986 about a Japanese cargo pilot who flew 747 cargo planes from Japan to parts of the United States. Yeah. And he was pursued by some giant, uh, this thing was apparently bigger oh, than... I just I was I was listening to you. The uh, yeah. Do your, uh, yeah. Oh, so, you okay, so you know what I'm it. talking about. Yeah. yeah. So he was yeah. chased, and you can look this up. It's a fascinating story. But what the he made the the cardinal sin was he got to the ground and report, and he talked to some news people, some reporters, yeah. and they immediately grounded him. He never flew again. And you know, they, and they even put like the picture they put of him in the the paper was you know him kind of describing what this giant thing looked like. But I have no doubt that he saw it. I mean, the United States Air Force helped him try to uh, try to avoid this thing, and yet you know the airline industry, his his company, and he was. We're not talking about a a a, a, pa a big passenger airline. We're talking about just a cargo airline. And yeah. but they didn't want to hear it. It's like, yeah, we don't want you up there anymore. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, but that's but the they didn't. But they didn't fire him. Yeah. But they they put yeah. him on a desk, and that was it. They did not fire him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's what they're gonna do with me. But I think, well, you know, I can I can do my job. Let's say I I feel this as a calling. So I I want to help out wherever I can. That's awesome. <laughs> and also, I wanted to tell uh, my children, but they were not interested. So he said, well, how no, how how. How old are They're they though? 16, 16 and 13, mm. and I'm 49. They, so, I mean, I didn't even believe in, I didn't even look at conspiracies until I was 20, 20, 21. Yeah. So yeah, I can understand, but you know, I said, well, I want to share this with, with you guys because they know I hate the school system. So, sure. but, but their dad is just totally the opposite. So, um, yeah, well, not totally the opposite, but yeah, he thinks wow. that if you do a good job in school, you get a you get a good job later on in life, and then yeah. you, well, whatever, you know well, the story. So, um, but my oldest son he said, "Well, mom, I I keep it in mind that it might be, but for now, it for me it's easier to just stay with the the things that they teach me in school." Exactly. That's what yeah. I have to reproduce. I said, "Yeah." Yeah, sure. yeah, it's tough. It's tough to fight. Yeah, no, smart kid. I mean, it's yeah. tough to fight the school system. No, no question. Yeah. And yeah. there'll be a lot of people out there, and you, you probably heard me say it. That they say, well, what does it matter? Does it really matter? I'm going. Well, it doesn't yeah. matter until it's true. Meaning, yeah. uh, you know, you can you can think about it all you want. You know, it, again, I, I use the comparison. It's like trying to tell somebody they're adopted. You can tell somebody all day long, like, whatever, whatever. And, and they'd be like, you know, it doesn't even matter if I'm adopted. You know, I'm going, oh, yeah, because here's the folder saying that you're adopted. You know, it's, it's the actual real thing. And they're like, yeah. OK, well, uh -huh. now I care. It's like, yeah, see, yeah. see yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You don't care until it's it's real. It's and yeah. so so what um, I, I don't want to keep you too much. I know you're calling from the yeah i was actually i was uh, it's almost 12 o'clock i was ready to go to bed oh, yeah no it's totally uh, cool. i read your email you, no i'm no i'm glad i well, yeah I, i'm sorry i completely forgot about the time zone difference because it's only yeah. two three o'clock in the afternoon here and it's what do you have any questions for me any little anything while well, you got me i mean not many people get to catch me on the phone uh, but in your case i was like you know what and, and i i tried to just so you know i tried to um to to shift this off it's like oh you know jaron if jaron scheduled you jaron can can talk to you but when uh when you email me it's like okay you know i don't know you know chances are i'm gonna miss you plus i'm, I'm heading out to la here for a, a thing pretty soon and we may not even catch each other so sorry not to belabor the point do you have any questions for me anything you want to ask um well what is the thing that i can do you know to to yeah to contribute because that's yeah, because there are already a lot of things out there, and, and to do again the same things that everybody else does is not very helpful. But tell in your case, you yeah. I can tell you exactly how you can contribute. Tell your story like you like you just did to me. So when Jaron finally does track you down, 
tell tell the story and i will pass i, I will pass you around and uh heck um patricia steer would love to get you on skype if you know who okay. she is yeah, uh she she would love to talk to you and you know get your face out there i think it's a great story you know okay. uh, flat yeah. you know uh, flat Earth, um, flat Earth pilot gets grounded. For, I'm sorry, pilot 737. That's the headline right there. 737 pilot gets grounded for speaking out on flat Earth. It's it's that's you've got a unique perspective there. We don't have a whole bunch of pilots that are that are involved, but yeah. the fact that you were involved spoke your mind, and they did exactly what I would expect them to do. Uh, and yeah. in fact, if it was in the United States, they'd probably take it even a little further. And the United States would be like, yeah, you probably should go to another company. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Netherlands, you know, a lot more lax from what I can tell. Uh, yeah. But no, they just are. do what you're doing. You don't have to do anything special. I mean, everyone's got their own cast. Everyone's got their own role to play in this. And yours is just taking your career that you have had up until this point and applying it. And again, I love the fact that you want to wear a t-shirt to, to work, a flat yeah. earth t-shirt to work. That would be awesome. In fact, you know what? I will email you a link to some great shirts. Uh, the, okay. the, people that, the people that supply me for all the, the meetups, uh, yeah. they're out of uh, Oklahoma, uh, over here in the United States. And they, they've got some great shirts. You know, I will, in fact, as soon as I hang up with you, I will email you the link to the shirts and you can pick. I, I've got a whole bunch from, I've, I literally, I think I have one of everything they have, you know, everything from Flat Earth Army to Flat Earth Tour Guide to uh, every, everything is Flat Earth. You, you'll love it. So Good. So then I have a, a different t-shirt for every day. Oh, yeah. It'd be awesome. But I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll totally send that to you. Uh, but I can't oh, thank great. you enough for, for reaching out. That's great. Well, and I'm, thank you for uh, being, uh, making time and, uh, and hearing, uh, to, hearing my story. I, no, I'm happy to do it. it, it one, one last question before, before I let you go. Uh, what took you so long? Have you been trying to, 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 to hunt us down? or Because I, I don't remember your name doesn't strike as, as, as familiar. No, Did, you... no, I don't even have. I'm, I'm just like an old-fashioned kind of girl. <laughs> <laughs> or I, I, I don't think I qualify as a girl anymore, but um, <laughs> uh, I, I don't have a YouTube account or anything, you know. So I just, I was always breaking out in sweat to set up the Skype and everything. And then I was really lucky that everything was, you know, working. I, I, uh, I'm not on Skype right now, but, oh, okay. you know, to, to talk with, uh, with Karen. And um, so... Uh, yeah, no. I'm well, no, I'm glad. I'm glad that you reached out, and uh, we'll, you know, the community. I'm sure we'll we will track. We will we will grab we'll, what what you've got going, and we will follow you as as long as we can. Okay, and and how um, should I do something then, or or make myself known in the YouTube? Uh, thing or um you know what let's let's don't don't push it if you're not natural to it right now don't don't do it yet let i i will turn this i will put this you know i'll turn this into a slideshow and i will pull out those if i can find them because you didn't say them very clearly the the name of the company you were working for and uh <laughs> hopefully jaron will um uh do a thing for you and i will recommend your thing to patricia let's let's get your name out there first and then at the you know the just make yourself available that's that's the one piece of advice i can give you uh okay, yeah. use your real name if you can and uh yeah, that's and, my real name yeah, yeah and just and just make your make yourself available to people who want to ask questions because it's you are in a unique position remember not only do most people are you know 99.999 percent of people of the world don't get involved in a space program but most people don't even get involved in an airline program so an airline's the closest thing we have to the space yeah. program right now. A so you have a you have a yeah. you have a wonderful little opinion, and uh, I like it. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> All right, I will. What I'll do is I'll I'll put this together in a uh, in a slideshow. Go to bed, and uh, you'll you'll have a link in the morning, and I'll also send you I'll send you the t-shirt that links right now. It'll take me a couple hours to put together the um, the interview. Great, thank you All very right. much. Hey, you okay. have a good, Keep up good, the good night. Work. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right. Have, <laughs> have a good, good night. Day. All right. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.